Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Yep, back again with a pandemic project, and we all can't wait for these pandemic uh, issues to go away. But in the meantime, I've been trying to do one of these a day, and uh, just to keep us all entertained and out of harm's way. And uh, if you are, happen to be a first responder, essential personnel, fire, police, first responders, nursing home, and healthcare workers, well, thank you for everything it is you're doing to keep us out of our way. Uh, I'm just trying to keep everybody entertained in the meantime. Uh, I have a Shimano 251. I previewed this maybe two or three weeks ago. This is actually a personal reel. I bought it. I like to fish bait casters that are left-handed. I, mean, I happen to be right-handed, but what I like about it is that uh, you can throw this reel out and then you can uh, reel it back in without changing the hands of that. So this reel has a couple of problems. It has a a bait casting free spool release that's not working and it also has a broken anti-reverse. Well today at a minimum we're going to fix the anti-reverse and we're going to try and figure out why this one is is kind of seized up the way it is. My guess is that somebody took this apart and didn't thread the, uh, the eye back. Well the good news was a couple of weeks ago I previewed this for you and I tried to find the parts first on fishshimano.com uh, which is Shimano's website and found out that the reel is too old and uh, then I was able to find it on e-replacement parts so that's a secondary supplier for um, for Shimano uh, here's the information for that I'll hold it for just a moment but if you go on to ereplacementparts.com it has everything in there and you can see it's got pictures of power tools and lawn mowers and blenders so my advice to you is if you're trying to find the Shimano part on that site in the search bar put in your your reel in this case I put in Shimano Calcutta 251 and that'll limit the search significantly if you know the part number or something or you just put in Shimano you're gonna get Shimano bike parts and you're gonna get all kinds of craziness come up with that I don't know if Shimano makes lawn mowers but if they did you'll probably get them in there as well all right I'm gonna take off the uh, exterior parts. We're going to open this up and we'll show you how to replace that. At the same time, just because it was convenient, I ordered the collar. Now, the collar is never or very rarely a fail point in this, but I just decided if I'm going to do it, I might as well just do it completely, get that part done. So we're going to take this whole reel apart. I'm going to show you how to uh, service this reel in addition to just replacing those two pieces and uh, hopefully we'll find out why that other piece isn't working as well. So I just took the handle and the handle nut off. That was a reverse threaded handle nut so it came off in a clockwise direction and I put them in a parts tray and for those of you that watch know that my parts tray is the bottom of a milk jug and I put it in there so that I can find them later on and uh, so the handle nut was reverse threaded this is a lefty reel, so you figure everything is going to be reverse threaded. Because if, if you're reeling this down, I call it a lefty reel. It's the reel that uh, you turn with your left hand. Uh, so if you want to tighten your drag, you want to tighten it uh, counterclockwise, which is normally the off position. There's two little tension washers that controls the, the tension on the star adjuster. So I put them right into that and I let that go to the side. Now we have two screws that are the case screws. That's going to help us remove this from the actual assembly. And when I take this off, I'm just going to look and see where that... Uh, yeah, so my suspicion here is that this was installed incorrectly and that's why it wasn't working. So when you go to install, we're going to do this right now. When you go to install, you want to push this trip lever down and you want to push the button up like that. And I'm just going to put that right back right now in case any of you are having that trouble. We'll just see if that solves my problem with the, uh, the free spool release. I'm not sure I'm in. It'd be nice to get one of these out of the way quickly. I'm not, uh, something's not seating properly. I don't need the spool in order to do that. So let's just assume I didn't have the spool in properly. 
There we go. Let's tighten this down. Tighten the other side down. And now if I trip this, it should pop. There you go. And we should be able to throw it down, pop it. So common problem that a lot of folks do, they don't understand that mounting procedure for that free spool release and get it stuck below, which is what happened. So again, just for a quick review, whenever you go to reinstall that free spool, this trip lever belongs in the down position, the button belongs in the up position, and you shouldn't ever have a problem with that. But my problem is over with that anti-reverse. So let's take that anti-reverse, let's take the case off. We can actually pull the anti-reverse off right now. So interesting thing, I believe that this is the anti-reverse for the other Shimano as well, the 250 in the 400 series and the like. And all they do differently, if you were using this on the 250, it would face this way. And if you're using it on the 251, it faces upside down. And the only reason for that is which way you want that to stop. I've also gotten a lot of questions and comments in from folks that uh, say my instant anti-reverse doesn't work, or it only reverse works the wrong way. Well, the answer is, is that you put it in upside down when you went to reinstall. All right, uh, this one's gonna be fairly simple in terms of solving that issue. I got, as I mentioned, I got the new uh, shield only because it looks like there's a lot of junk on this one and looks like there's a lot of rust in the other one So we're just going to set that to a side for a moment and let's go ahead and just see what's underneath here Since I'm going to be using it. I want to make sure that it's properly lubed up and uh, That I don't have any experience uh, any bad experiences And I go to take it fishing. I'd hate to open it up uh, Or not open it up find out I have a bad drag washer or something and then have to complete that. There's two screws that hold the side plate on. Let's go ahead and take those off. I'm going to take the new assembly and put that in my parts tray just so I don't lose it. And I'm going to do the same thing with these two side plates once I make sure that both of these screws are the same length. And if they're not the same length, you would want to go ahead and note that. But they are the same length. So those can go into my parts tray. It's a good time to tell you take pictures, right? Uh, I've been in enough of these Calcuttas, I kind of know this reel. But if you're not familiar with it, take the pictures so that you know where those posts line up, what screws came from where, what the orientation was, and so on. All right, to remove that side plate, simply pull up. The side plate here is clean. There's no better time than right now to just put this anti-reverse in. And remember, because it's an opposite anti-reverse, goes with that plastic side facing out. It just goes in like that, simple enough. I can, as I mentioned, it can get pushed through either way. Actually, I guess we're going to wind up leaving it like that because it's falling through. All right, I have a dirty inside reel, but it doesn't look like anything's broken in there. Notice the orientation on the yoke. There's a long side, short side. It's hard to mess this one up. Uh, sometimes you have the complete rounded shoulder one, like a pen. Uh, not that you're going to mess up a pen Long Beach, but uh, you also want to note that the spool gear has got the flat side here. Uh, sometimes I see folks that go ahead and install that backwards and tell me that their reel doesn't spin. And I should be able to take this, uh, this assembly off right now. Just a little tight. You may have to get these out piece by piece. That's why I wanted to, to focus on this, see just what was going on there. But sometimes the pressure of the drags have been pressed down or something. And uh, holding it in. That drag actually looks like it's in decent condition. You just need to use equal pressure to pull this assembly off right now. All right, so the yoke and the pinion gear are off. And I want to just find the right place to grab this to bring this off as well. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm wrestling with that, but I'm just going to take the whole assembly off. 
In the back here, there's an E-clip. Try and hold one side of it. Put pressure on the other side. Just guard that you don't lose that clip. Take the clip off. You can pull the whole assembly out. And that's probably what it was. It looks like there's just a whole bunch of muck and stuff that was that I was fighting there, so why bother? To clean it all up anyway. Again, it's gonna be my personal reel, so I want to make sure that uh, it's clean. And this one needs a good cleaning. Kind of understood that when I bought it. I bought it as a parts reel. Guess why? The anti reverse didn't work, and it appears that uh, the free spool didn't work as well. So the anti reverse did have a lot of grease, uh, rust in it. We saw that when we took that off. So it's possible that one of those roller bearings did fail in there. Um, we saw why the free spool doesn't work. It was wasn't loaded properly. And what I'm using right now is just penetrating oil. In this case, it happens to be WD-40, but it can be anything. And uh, cotton swabs and elbow grease to get all of this stuff cleaned. Now, we're going to have a contest in a little while. CJ, who watches the channel, is a fanatic about using the Oral-B toothbrush and a polish called Flitz. And he tells me that uh, you know, that can restore it to like new condition. Um, so we're going to take a Senator that I previewed, Penn Senator 3.0. He's going to do it with his uh, Oral-B toothbrush and that polish there. I'm going to do mine with an ultrasonic cleaner and uh, elbow grease, which is kind of what I'm used to. And we're going to see, uh, so we're going to compare results. So stay tuned for that one uh, if you think you might find that interesting. All right, I'm just going to pull the whole assembly off now, as I mentioned. It's just uh, kind of a dirty mess, so I hope you don't mind me doing the dishes and kind of talking as we're kind of cleaning this up. But uh, I just want to make sure that uh, we got this clean and that I don't have a catastrophic failure somewhere when I go to uh, go fishing because, well, there's just a lot of dirt and junk in there. One of the reasons I do this uh, this way is I wanted to make sure that there was no line or anything that was trapped in there. Uh, if there was line trapped in there, it would, it would certainly become a problem. All right, this little collar goes back on this side. Saw that fall out before. There's actually two pieces of this. There's a flat side. You want to make sure you get the flat side so that it meshes here. There's the little collar that's going to go on the end of the assembly. We're going to grab that assembly and put that on now. And now I'm going to get that E clip holding this whole thing in place. I'm just going to go to reinstall that. Sometimes you can do it by hand pressure. Sometimes you need a little assist from a uh, needle nose pliers or something. Assist complete. We're in good there. Now, these are plastic. You don't have to um, lubricate them by their nature. They are a petroleum product. It won't hurt to put the, uh, the grease on there. This one's going to drive the line, level line feature. So go ahead and you know, grease it up if you like. A little grease on the shaft as well. All right, we see what's bogging this down. There's a whole bunch of old grease on this. This one generally can just get wiped off. This is a click ratchet that's going to trip when you go to uh, into free spool. It's going to trip it out. Just cleaning off the old. And it's, the drag washer seems okay. It's a hard washer, so it's kind of difficult to kind of wear this one down, which is one of the advantages of a Calcutta. 
This can get, this one can get um, dry grease on it, so let's go ahead and give that a fresh coat. I put the Cal's Universal Dry Grease, that's the tan grease that I use, put that onto the wash and then I rub it in with my hand and reinstall. This was the washer that went underneath. This is a hard washer. And we have our main gear goes back on. And just make sure you get that snap. This yoke again has got the same issues here. Again, kind of hard to mess this one up because you got a long side, short side on this one. But pay attention if you're taking a yoke off, particularly on a lot of these small profile or low profile bait casters where they're even. I can't tell you the number, but I can say I've got more than my share of reels that have come in with the spool not turning. Somebody took the maintenance, went to take the maintenance and inverted the yoke. And when they did that, either the springs didn't seat or the uh, spool gear was backwards or something that just mechanically did not line up. All right, here's that pinion gear. Again, just make sure it's nice and clean and get a fresh lube on it. So I fish surf with this. I put a... Uh, a light braid on it, maybe a 20 pound braid, put it on a uh, 8 or a 9 foot uh, conventional surf casting rod and I uh, enjoy going out there and just kind of throwing this around and getting, uh, getting my fair share of fishing in between everything else. Folks ask me if I ever have the time to fish, I do, and, uh, and this is one of the ways that I do like to fish. I kind of learned that way growing up, and that's uh, kind of stuck with me all along. Although growing up, I used the, uh, the bigger pens, like a pen squitter or um, beach master or something like that, surf masters, as opposed to uh, some of these smaller profiles now. All right, there's my top washer. And of course, I did mention we got a new collar for that anti reverse. I'm going to leave that that one out and uh, we can go ahead and put the springs on put those are the two little cavities there and essentially that's the inside work of this we got to do two things more I guess while I'm at it just going to oil that free spool release area and I'm going to oil behind the case where the um, little cam is going to ride that's going to act as a free spool. All right, the inside of the case is clean. Drop of oil into the spool adjuster. doesn't hurt. Let's turn this thing around, set this up. And then I have those two screws that I made sure were the same size. And once you get those set up, you can press down. You're going to have to hold this one. Some of the cases you don't have to hold, like an ambassador, for example. Some you do have to put that constant tension on. And this is one of those that requires the constant tension. Oops. Those of you that know me and know small screws, now it's time for a cup of coffee. All right, micro screwdriver on these, small, uh, small head. I can hardly wait to see if my empty reverse works when we go to reinstall that. So I didn't pay, uh, this wasn't cheap. As a parts reel, I think it was 65 or $70. But I just don't find these left-handed ones, and I thought it was worth the effort, and since uh, I kind of know how to do that anyway, all right, I'm going to use oil in the uh, in the anti-reverse gear to keep it fresh. I use an aftermarket uh, product called Relax. It's a synthetic wheel oil. Remember what I said, on the left-handed side, this plastic goes up. If you're dealing with an even-numbered reel, like a 250, a right-handed uh, drive faces down. 
Okay, and it simply presses in. So now we're up to our. Just want to make sure that I have this seated properly. There you go. Those two prongs have to sit into that washer. Two prongs being these, they have to sit into that cap washer. It just looked like it was a little bit proud there. All right. So next up, then we have our tension washers. Remember the two of those I showed you. These are. Um, uh, concave they're not flat washers so if you need if you don't like a lot of tension just put them back to back nest them you can flip them this way they give you more tension you'll see the spacing and you can also put it this way and each one of them is kind of like a uh, a little bit more of a variation on the sensitivity of the star drag i'm going to go face to face with these star drag goes on next remember it's a left-handed reel so the star drag goes in from the opposite direction. I have had reels come in saying my drag doesn't work and I didn't realize I had a left-handed reel. Okay, so next up then, I'm just gonna see if I can't scoot this line drive over to one side. I'm going to take the cap off so that I can oil my pawl. This is not a job for big hands. This job kind of needs to get done. This is a plastic carrier. Be careful when you're working with this. These break easily. There we go. So here's your pawl. You can pick the pawl out. Grab it with a pliers if you like. Check the prongs. Make sure that they're even. They are. This one was working, we noticed. But again, if you're not familiar with the reel, I'm not. It's my reel, but I'm not familiar with it. And then get the oil onto the, the pawl. And this is where this, uh, this particular applicator works great. I also use oil on the worm gear. I don't use uh, grease. And this is going to be fun putting this back on. Just because. And again, it's plastic, so be careful with this as a plastic piece. Don't over tighten it. I've seen them snap, and then uh, you're and you got trouble. You got to replace the whole piece. Also, some of you may have Shimano reels that don't have this flat-sided metal case to it. You may have a plastic case, and that's going to be the same issue there. It's going to have to be treated gently. I'm trying to line this pawl up right now. The teeth are not meshing with the worm gear. Uh, that should do it now. So you just have to do trial and error until you get it right. All right, one last piece then is making sure I put oil onto the back bearing there. I did mention when I previewed this that I fully intend to go get ceramic bearings for this reel and upgrade it. Uh, but it, before I ordered the ceramic bearings, I wanted to make sure that I did this basic service so that I could uh, wouldn't waste anything going buying bearings and find out the inside of the reel is in bad condition. All right, there's no brakes on here. Somebody must have removed them. That's all right. I don't fish the brakes anyway. So I guess as a parts reel, it was probably intended that way. Somebody even took the parts off. And uh, this is what I got for it. All right, the back of this thing is just a little bit mucky, so let's just get the last of that out of here. Seems to be a little bit of that residual grease. And old grease is an enemy of reels. New grease is its best friend. All right. Uh, we oiled this from the other side, but this is the slide, so I want to make sure I oil it, oil it there. Alright, and now it's test time. I know I mentioned this earlier, but I want to make sure that everybody was paying attention. The test is how do you set the free spool release button so that it works properly. And the answer was, yep, you're right. 
you push this down out of the way and then you push this up or and hold it up while you go to mesh the two and you just want to make sure your case comes in square It'll be time to take a test drive on this one. And this weekend I'll try and get out there and uh, throw this wheel and see how it does. We uh, should just be starting the striped bass season. There's still some bluefish around in the area. There's a lot to be caught offshore, although a lot of the seasons have closed. And uh, we'll see how we do. All right, let's put the handle on. Let's make sure that our free spool is, is, is turning. It's a little tight. I remember I oiled in that. There you go, now we got it working right. Let's put the tension washer back on. Handle back on. Handle nut, remember it came off the way you would expect it to go on. So this is a left threaded or reversed nut. So it goes in a counterclockwise for tightening. Same thing with the handle, you want to tighten your drag down that way. Generally speaking, if you have the flat part of the nut aligned perpendicular with the uh, hold down screw hole, it will align properly and enable you to do that. And in this case it did. All right, so this should trip the, the button. We should be able to crank away. We've got our pole and line guide working nicely. And a little creak in the hands, but here's the important part. Does it stop? Well, boy, it sure does, doesn't it? So that's the answer. For whatever reason, the that anti-reverse bearing failed. It did fail. And uh, we now have a reel that's back in, in uh, shape, ready to be given a second chance and go fishing. So final comment on this, if you're fishing braid, and I intend to fish 20 pound braid, notice that there's no stud on this spool. And if you have a reel out there that you're gonna fish braid and it doesn't have a stud or a through pass or anything like that, you are opening yourself up to braid slip if you do not back the reel up with monofilament before you add the braid. So monofilament is coarser it will grip this spool but braid is very slippery and that's why they call it braid slip it will not grip the core of the spool and you'll uh, you'll just have a reel that doesn't feel like the drag is working and actually drags working fine it's the, um, the braid slipping around the spool that doesn't give it that grip to hold the fish so recommendations, generally speaking, is to use about 10 pounds, uh, 10 yards of monofilament. Doesn't matter what uh, what pound test it is, and then go ahead and tie in your your braid at that point, and uh, you won't have that braid slip. So there you go. I like this reel. I'll let you know how it uh, performs fishing wise uh, when I take that out in the surf and uh, give it a few tosses. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. If you have any questions at all about a fishing reel, whether it's this one or uh, another uh, reel, and maybe you got one open on your bench and you're having some problems with it, uh, by all means, uh, shoot me a note in the comment section. I will try and answer that and help you solve your problem. And if you have a reel that needs to be repaired and you'd like me to work on it for you, uh, then contact me by the information on the business card that follows. And I will uh, try to do my best uh, to provide you with the real repair information so that we can give your reel, much like mine, a second chance, get it out there to go fishing, and uh, hopefully catch the big one. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.